of everything we've been studying. It, it's, the message is called Bearing the Cross. And it's a key step to what we've been talking about, because if you don't have this step, you can't gain total victory. So we know from what we've been talking about, um, let me just put this up here. Yeah, that's better. Whoa, a bit loud. It's okay, I've talked softer. I won't have to strain my voice now. Thank you, Princess. I find once I start ministering, I'll just forget everything else. Amen. Okay, so let's review what we know so far about the truth. Amen? That we want to lay hold of all the time. We know that the two problems of man were our sins, which was our sinful activities. Our sins is the activities of sin, all your wrongdoing before God. And it brought effects. Sin, the wages of sin are death. We know that because these were nailed to the cross, that Jesus suffered for us. And one of the main effects of sins is guilt and the memory of sin. So that's what the blood does. The blood wipes away the memory of your sin. Hallelujah. And the guilt that comes with it. You, 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 you stop thinking those thoughts and feeling those feelings. You're wiped clean. Mm -hmm. Now, even though you're wiped clean, you can still replace them. And the reason why you can still replace them is because our old self, the, the Adamic nature, does not know how to please God. All it knows how to do is sin. It's yeah. sinful at the level of DNA. Mm -hmm. There are some diseases, like you ever see Down syndrome? You know, th those, those children, and they grow up to be adults, the problem is at the genetic level. They can't cure it because they cannot go down to the genetic level. So no drug can cure it because drugs work on the surface level. Mm -hmm. So our sinful nature was at the level of our genetics, our DNA. So that's why we had to be born up again. We had to get new DNA, right? But to get rid of this self, to free us from the self because his DNA could not be changed, God had to end him. So not only are our sins on the cross and we're forgiven for them, but we are on the cross, right? If the blood is not covering you, well, you're going to have to deal with all your sins and feel all that guilt and shame and try to make up for it. The problem is as fast as you're trying to make up for it, you're doing it. You need the blood to permanently keep making you feel justified mm -hmm. so you can approach God. Mm -hmm. And you need the cross to keep taking away, keep on the cross the old self, or the old self will continue to sin. Now, we know if, if we can accept the blood for forgiveness, we can accept that Christ wants to end our old life, mm -hmm. right? Our, our, our own self-will, our own independence, my way, when I want, whenever I want, how I want, you know, I'll please God my way, well, I don't feel like doing it today, what I like, what I don't like, mm -hmm. my opinions, my feelings, I went to school, this is what I was learned. That whole life, God says, I want it on the cross. So a new life can come. A new life that is connected with God, that is in constant, unbroken fellowship with God. The problem when we first come to God is we can't hear Him. <laughs> then we hear Him a little bit, but we don't hear Him a lot. Why? Because He's not fully on the cross, not fully dying on the cross. The more, the less He becomes, the greater this life be, comes during conflict. Right? So the first job is not to get the infilling of power of the Holy Spirit. The first job is to change our proportions. We want to be more spiritual and less of us. More of Jesus and less of us. So there's all of us, then there's very little of Jesus. Mm -hmm. If there's half of us, then there's half of Jesus. If there's all of Jesus, then there's very little of us. It's like a lawn. There can be a lot of weeds, but if you put in the good grass, it overtakes the weeds. So we want to change our proportion. Right? And God has given us a power to make that transition. And as we enjoy the power to keep dying so we can keep living, then God will fill us from above. Right? So there's the power in you, the Holy Spirit in you, and then Jesus at the right hand, ready to pour out more power. 
right? So as you release the Spirit and start to walk in the Spirit, and, and this is your reference, and this is who you see yourself as, and you're walking in the newness of life, then God promises to him, power that, to bless that, every spiritual blessing in heaven, all the gifts, everything is yours in terms of heaven if you walk in this new life, right? Now there's only one problem with this. There's one aspect more that he told his disciples. And what he told his disciples, and we're going to look at those scriptures today, is he said this, if you want to follow me, if you want to be my disciple, you must follow me and carry your cross. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Because if you, if say you die, and remember, the temptation is, okay, I want to do the things of God yet, but I don't know this power. I'm going to go, I'm going to go back to the old man. I'm going to let him off the cross, and I'm going to let him do the things I want to do. For example, I want to pray, or I want to do this. I want, I want to do the good things now. But, and this life will prompt you. This life will say, pray, love each other, do this, you know, do the things of God. But we don't know this power. So we go back to the old stuff. We let him off the cross to get his, our natural strength. Now, when we know when we do that, because this guy is programmed to sit and we'll end up back here. So this was Romans 7. Paul was like, okay, I know nothing's good in me. I know I should be on the cross. And I know I have the newness of life. But every time I try to do the good, I can't. Why? Because I keep using this guy's strength. And because every part of him is corrupted, I will end up here. The blood will have to keep washing me. I, I keep wanting to do it, but I can't do it. Because I don't understand how to use the new power from within. Now, even if you do understand that, even if you go, okay, I'm waiting for the power, I'm not going to use the old man, a lot of times the power does not flow all the time. Sometimes it comes, sometimes it doesn't. How come the power doesn't flow sometimes, and sometimes, even though you refuse to use your old strength, even though you're waiting for the anointing, you're waiting for the power of the Holy Spirit, how come it doesn't flow all the time? Because you don't know this step. You don't know how to bear your cross. Right? So, these are good. You need the blood to cover sins. You need the cross to take care of the old self. But you need to keep bearing the cross to release the power. This is what we're going to talk about today. What does that mean? Because Christ kept saying it. In all the Gospels, he kept saying, if you want to find your life, you've got to lose your life. Mm -hmm. If you want to follow me, you've got to carry your cross. You've got to deny yourself. You've got to forget yourself. He said this. Now, if God repeats something, you know it's important. Mm -hmm. Especially if he repeats it in all the Gospels. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, Paul was always repeating this. He was, he was saying, I daily die. You see, this, this bearing the cross is an ongoing process. Mm -hmm. God wants the old man on the cross, but there's a problem. He can still come off the cross, and he can still talk from the cross. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Are you listening to me? Yeah. This is why you'll be worshiping. And then this little voice in the back of your head says, uh, we didn't eat yet. Um, you left your car lights on, but you didn't leave your car lights on. Who is talking in the back there? Even though you, you want to please God and you're walking in the newness of life, it's the guy that, that keeps what? You may have put him in, you may have pinned him. It's like when you pin, a, when you pin an insect, like, like a bee or something, it can't move, but what does it do, in, what does it do on the pin? He keeps flapping around. <laughs> you see what I mean? Christ was beside two other thieves, um, beside two thieves, but they kept what? Talking. So, so you can still live on the cross. Yeah. Even though you don't let them off the cross yeah. to try to do the things of God, mm -hmm. you still can let them live on the cross and in fact he can get stronger. Mm -hmm. It's like supposing I put someone in, uh, of the mafia in jail, do you know they can still get stronger? Mm -hmm. Ever hear that? They put someone in jail but, but the, rack, the, the organization gets stronger. Why? Because he's still giving orders from jail. Yeah. <laughs> You see what I mean? So even if you agree, Lord, I agree, I should be dead and buried with you. I agree I'm in the new life, and I'm waiting for the power. But if you let him keep talking and listening to him, the power will still be blocked. Or the power will come out, but it's mixed. It's not strong. It's not pure. Amen? And that's what we want to talk about today. We want to get to the place where power is always... 
Because we need it. We need it to please God. We need it to get blessed. We need it to love. We need it to have peace. We, all the challenges in the day, we need power to do it. Because we know Adam's record. He cannot handle it. Even your best efforts, the Bible says, is like a filthy rag. Amen? Let's take, take a look at this. In your Bibles, first of all, go to Psalm 43, verse 3, please. <laughs> That's the power of the cross. Yeah, uh, uh, well, we're going to go into it. Psalms 43? Yeah. You can put them in jail, but you can't shut them up. This is the problem. But we have to have an execution. Yes, yes. He, he, he does, he does. But it, it's, it's, it's a process, as we'll see. Sorry, Psalm 43. Psalm 43, verse 3. Mm -hmm. there. Amen. Amen. It's called bearing the cross of Christ. Amen, Jazzy? We were talking about how we can have the blood for sin, we can have the cross for self, we can have the new life, and we're looking for power. But if we don't keep bearing the cross, if we don't keep carrying the cross, we can't keep perpetually getting power. Because you can be in the new life not looking to him for strength, because you know he'll just sin with the old natural strength, and you can be waiting for the power, but the power is still blocked, because he's still alive on the cross. So you definitely don't want him off the cross. But you definitely don't want him to stay strong on the cross. Someone can still live for a very long time on the cross. Someone can get stronger in jail because they're working out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Even if they're incarcerated, they can be getting stronger. Yes. Yes. Right? This is the process we want to be looking at. So in Psalm 43, verse 3, is everybody there? It reads, Oh! Send out your light and your truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. Amen. Right? So this should be your cry all the time. If you want to please God, you have to have light. Mm -hmm. And remember, you're not the light. The Bible says, in thy light I see light, which means I have understanding. I know what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. You cannot please God unless you have light because you can't see what he sees. Satan's whole attack is darkness. You cannot see. You cannot see yourself. You cannot see God. You cannot see your purpose. You cannot see anything. And, and um, we're dealing with ourselves now, our soul now. Because remember, we're a spirit, a soul, and a body. We have a spirit, which is our God element, regenerated through Christ, through the Holy Spirit. We have a soul, which is our individual element, mm -hmm. that has will, personality, feelings, and thinking. And we have a body, a container, that the soul and the spirit live in, temper, regularly, yes. and manifest through, right? So, without light, you cannot see. One of the reasons why we trust ourselves so much is because we don't see ourselves. Because God's judgment on the old man is crusa, fiction. But we don't quite believe him because we don't see what he do does. And we are trained by the world to go, ah, you can do it in yourself. You know, the Bible says we can, apart from you, you can do nothing. Now, does that mean you can literally do nothing? No, we can, there's lots of things we can do. We can go outside and we can read the Bible ourselves and we can go to the bathroom. There's lots of things. But if you do it from your old self, God says, I see it as nothing. It doesn't count. Mm -hmm. Remember, God's uh, crucifixion of Christ was his verdict on all the old, on all the old Adamic creation. Mm -hmm. God is wiping out all the old iPhone 4s. He mm -hmm. only wants iPhone Five. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. So, the necessity is for light. God must give us light. If He can't give us, if we, if, and remember, you have to be open to the light. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you're not open to the light, God will lead you to a series of experiences to show you that every time you act from yourself, every time you don't consult the new light, and you just go, I can do it, every time you come off the cross, it will be disaster. Yeah. Everything you say, everything you establish, everything you touch, you're like, why did I open my mouth? God will lead you repeatedly to experiences where you realize, if I start this, it's going to end in disaster. I better let God start. You start to be afraid. This is why Bob says, work out your salvation in trembling and fear. That first fear is yourself. Yeah. The second fear is, okay, I don't trust myself, but now i got to trust God. Amen? So, so the first fear is yourself. You've got to get that down pat or else you will just continue to come off the cross. You will not agree with God's judgment. And the second fear is this. You're trusting that God will do it, but you, but you don't know. You, maybe you don't quite know God yet. That's why God is always saying build up your faith. 
Hallelujah. So we want to always have light. If we have light, everything will be fine. Every, when you have light, everything is put in its place. If I don't have light, let's say, say the room is dark, right? I don't know where everything goes. When you have light, you go, oh, my sins are washed by the blood. I know where my sins go. My sins go, go behind the blood. And I know myself is on the cross. And I know I'm in the new life. And I know there's power available to me if I keep bearing the cross, which I'll, I'll explain. Amen? Go to Romans 6, 4, please. Jesus were baptized into his death. So when you're baptized, what you're really saying is, I agree that I should be buried. I agree that my life, should, that I need another life. You took my place on the cross. You took my place in death. Now you need to take my place in life. Right? I couldn't die, because if I died, then, well, I, would, I couldn't please you at all, Lord. But now that I'm living, I still can't please you. I need your life. So I, this old life cannot do what you want me to do. The only thing that's good for it is to be buried. Mm -hmm. Right? We were buried, therefore, with him by the baptism of the death. So that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, so we too might habitually live and behave in newness of life. Mm -hmm. So unless you see yourself dead, you won't be buried. The problem is we get baptized, but we don't quite see ourselves as dead. That's why we need light. Mm -hmm. See? Now, if you jump to this verse 6, he goes, We know that our un old, unrenewed self was nailed to the cross with him, in order that our body, which is the instrument of sin, might be made ineffective and inactive for evil, that we might no longer be the slaves of sin. So, notice here, God does not deal with sin directly. The, it, there's three characters here. The old, unrenewed self, your body, and the master of sin that made you a slave at the end. So there's a sin master, mm -hmm. the master spirit of sin, sin is a spirit. He talks to Adam, your old man, and then your old man controls your body to sin. So God does not take care of the boss, and he does not, not take care of the, the car. He takes care of the driver of the car. Mm -hmm. You see? So there's, there's the chauffeur who's driving the car, and then there's someone in the back seat telling the chauffeur what to drive. God does not deal with the guy in the back seat. He doesn't deal with the car. He deals with the driver. And what does he do with the driver? He nails him what? On the cross. Because now the spirit of sin has no one to employ. See? It says to be made ineffective and inactive. So if I have no driver for my car, can my car do anything? No. You see, what God does when he crucifies you, you have to understand what it means to be crucified with Christ. Mm -hmm. Now, keep your finger there. Jump to Colossians 2, verse 11. And I will show you the mystery of what Christ can do and how he delivers us. Yes, so what does it mean when it says we were nailed to the cross and our body is no longer an instrument of sin. What does that mean that I'm nailed to the cross and my body is no longer an instrument of sin? If you read Colossians 2 from verse 11, is everybody there? Now this is, this is the exact meaning of this scripture. These are sister scriptures. So you fully understand. In him also you were circumcised with a circumcision not made with hands, but in a spiritual circumcision before by Christ, by stripping off the body of the flesh, the whole corrupt carnal nature with its passions and lusts. Thus you were circumcised when you were buried with him in your baptism. So your baptism, which is a death and a burial, is also a circumcision. 
in which you were also raised with him to a new life through your faith in the working of God as displayed when he raised him up from the dead. So what does it mean when Paul said, I've been baptized into his death? What does it mean that my old self was nailed to the cross and my body is no longer an instrument of sin? This is what it means. There is a circumcision. Now, do you know what a circumcision is? It's when you take a little bit of skin off of an organ. So you separate the skin from the rest of the organ. It, it says you were circumcised. So it's not a physical circumcision. It's a spiritual. So what God does is he separates the soul and the body. So there, there's, there's something that connects the soul and the body. It's like a glove. I can put my hand into a glove, right? My hand is the soul and my glove is the body. The soul fits into the body because the soul has desires and thoughts and feelings. And it wants a body that it can feel to drive around in. Mm -hmm. This is what we call our normal worldly life. Mm -hmm. Our normally worldly life was our spirit was dead, and our soul with all its range of abilities, I can think and I can feel and I can do and I can walk and I can decide and I can imagine and I can memorize and I can... It has all sorts of things it can do, right? It plugged into the car, the, the body, with all its weakness. The body, remember, the spirit is willing, but the body is weak, and that's how it's lived its life. Right? Because when Adam fell, the spirit of man died, but his soul became super strong. Originally, Adam's spirit was really strong. His soul was subservient. But when he ate the wrong tree, it reversed the process. His soul, his spirit died. His spirit went into coma. It was eternal, but it was just like, like this forever. And the soul got magnified. Its ability to think became excessive. Its ability to feel became excessive. Its ability to decide and imagine and do what it wants and live a life of its own. It became super high. It's like it, when he ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, it's like the soul took steroids. Mm -hmm. It became a super soul. It started to live off itself yeah. and not the tree of life. It no longer depended on the spirit. It totally depended what? On itself. You know, and I have my own life and I can think and I can feel and I can decide and I have this body to drive around in and this is my life in the world. Right? So this is life. Now what Christ does is the first thing he does on the cross is he puts Adam, the old self, the old corrupt nature, Adam, on the cross. And if Adam is on the cross, he cannot be in the body. He, God separates the body and the soul. He, there's a circum. Scission. The cross is like a knife. Mm. Now, I don't know if you've ever experienced this, but have you ever been like, like praying and fasting and really trying to get close to God? And then you go to eat something and, and you, I can't taste this. Have you ever experienced that? Have you ever experienced where it's like you cannot feel through your body? Yeah. You know what that is? That's the circumcision. That's your baptism into death. That's when Christ nailed the, the, the self to the cross. The old unrenewed self. So your body is no longer an instrument of sin. The glove, the hand can't get in the glove. Mm -hmm. So he's still full of his independence. He's still full of ideas. And, and what I want to do is his pride and his rebellion and his selfishness. But he doesn't have a body to what? Feel through. He can, he can walk in his body. He can talk. But he can't feel it. So he cannot experience the world anymore. His five senses have died. Now, there's a part of you that likes this because you're like, thank God, now I can stop sitting through the body. Mm -hmm. But there's a part of you that's nailed on the cross that is very upset. It's always looking for a chance to come off the cross mm -hmm. and live in the body. Mm -hmm. It's always trying to come out of jail. Remember, we were like all in driving school, right? And we all had our cars. Well, the kingdom of God, the ministry of transportation says you don't know how to drive. You use your body for all sorts of evil, wicked things. Mm -hmm. So I'm taking away your license. I'm putting the driver in jail and I'm impounding your car. Mm. In other words, the two bad boys are separated. Mm. Right? Uh, when I was a teacher, the bad kids would get together and they get really extra bad. Ever notice that in school? The bad kids are always together. Yep. Well, when I was a teacher, I had all the bad kids in the corners. One there, one there, one there, one there. Why did I have them in the corners? So they're as far away from each other as possible. Because when they get together, they destroy the whole class. So God's like, I can't afford this independent, rebellious soul and this body of weakness together. Because if I let them together, all craziness will break what? Loose. 
You know, the, the body will go, you can use me and you can feel through me. And, 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 and the soul is like, yeah, and I got lots of ideas. So they, the two bad boys were in what, cahoots. So when you are baptized, in that Romans, do you know what it means? It means your soul is in this position and your body is in this position, inactive. It can't sin. It can do things, but it can't sin because this guy can't plug into it. It's like, I want to sin, but I can't experience it. So what's the point? So he, he's kind of in limbo right now. So he's in position on the cross. See, that's what baptism means. Now go back to Romans 6. Okay? This is called the first entrance into the desert. You, now, you, you, because you're so used to living through the body. The soul is so used to plugging into the body. But it doesn't know how to, how to live anywhere else. Now, why did God take away the body? Because now he wants the soul to plug into what? The spirit. Mm -hmm. The soul, if, if God left the body open to the soul, the soul would never cross over. You know what? He's addicted to the body. It's like a toy. He cannot stop playing with the body. Mm -hmm. So God has to take away it. He has to circumcise it. So the soul is like, I can't play with, with my body. How am I going to live now? Mm -hmm. And God's like, there's a new way. Amen. I want you to live through your spirit not live through your body. So, so what God does is, is he traps the soul. The soul is on the cross. It can't move. It can't access the body to touch the world. But it's rebellious still. It doesn't want to cross over to what? The spirit. That You can be here a long time. Mm -hmm. And if you don't understand the map I'm drawing for you, you don't know your way out. Mm -hmm. Because God will not stop trying to bring you to the place where you realize there's nothing good in you and I have to separate you from your body. He will not stop bringing this to you. But even when you realize this, you still have to renew the entirety of your mind. Mm -hmm. You still have to learn to connect with the Spirit and be compatible to the Spirit and submit to the Spirit. Mm -hmm. You don't, the, the soul on the cross does not want to submit to the Spirit. It's still full of life. It's just in jail. Like, if you put some criminals in jail, have they repented? Have they changed? No, no they just can't, they don't just have their range of ability. He still wants to do his own thing. Yes. And God's like, that's not the way he designed you. Yes. you know, God gets no glory out of that. And God will not empower that. Yeah. So he's in limbo for a while. So go back to, to Romans 6, 4 to 13. Okay? Jump down to verse 11. So that's what it means. So that's what it means that you have been nailed to the cross and your body is now inactive. Mm -hmm. if, if you let him off the cross and you can't let him off the cross, guess what? Your body, your body instantly becomes what? active again. Mm -hmm. No, you need an inactive body. You need a crucified soul. And then he has to be renewed. The cross it doesn't just hold him in place. The cross also is his teacher. Mm -hmm. He's trying to teach him to submit. He's trying to bring light to, for him to see, look it, if I let you off the cross, you are just going to keep on doing the same thing that got Jesus killed. Mm -hmm. I cannot let you off the cross. And you have to learn to submit to me. But, and this is where you need patience. We have been so long in our independence that we cannot stop it. Our first impulse is always like, I can do that. Our, we, we just always want to run ahead. We never want to like look to the spirit. We have to develop a new habit through the cross. Okay, you know why I'm being held here? Because I don't know how to drive through that body. And until I learn to submit to the spirit, I can't re-enter. Because God will allow the soul and the body to reconnect. But after the soul has transformed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so God puts him in jail, takes away his car, and puts him in driving school. This is the entire renewal of the mind. So you lose the habit to run ahead all the time. Amen? So if you go to Romans 6, from verse 11, mm -hmm. right? So notice in verse 6 it says, We know. This is why you need the light. You need a revelation to know yes, that you Lord. are dead. You can't think, just like you know you have feet, you must know you are yes. dead. If you know you're dead, look at verse 11. Uh, Even so, it. consider okay. yourselves okay. also dead to sin. Okay. So once you see it, now you take a position. If I see I'm dead, I'm buried. If I see I'm dead, I consider myself, I think of myself that way. You can't just think it. You have to know it. Faith will bring the light. The light will bring knowing. Knowing will bring a, a position of considering or reckoning yourself dead. 
but alive to God, living in unbroken fellowship in Christ Jesus. Now let's jump to 13. Do not continue offering or yielding your body and members and faculties of sin as instruments, tools of, righteous, of wickedness, but offer and yield yourselves to God as though you have been raised from the dead. So there's three steps here. Know you're dead. Mm -hmm. Reckon yourself or, or, or think of yourself as dead. Because once you know it, you'll see it. Once you see it, you'll take that position. Right? Reckoning. Your thoughts will revolve around this thing that you know. Amen? If I know I'm a child of God, I think around that. Amen? First the position, knowing I'm on the cross. My, my body is made ineffective. Now I present myself to God as one raised from the dead. God will not accept you presenting anything else. Mm -hmm. If we keep presenting the old self, mm -hmm. he, he does not accept it. No, it has to be on the cross, and it has to be changed into a submissive soul. Mm -hmm. Then God will accept this, and life will start to flow up abundantly. Mm -hmm. This is the key. Mm -hmm. Amen? Now, if you go to Matthew 10... Um, Matthew 10 from 37. Now we're going to look at the soul. Okay, so the soul is in position, right? The soul is in position now on the cross, and the body is inactive. But now we must change him on that cross. We must not, must not let him off the cross, and we must deal with him on the cross. But to deal with him on the cross, we have to see what he's like. So what is our old self like? What is God trying to end and recreate? So we go to Matthew 10, from verse 37. Is everybody there? He goes, He who loves and takes more pleasure in father or mother more than in me is not worthy of me. And he who loves and takes more pleasure in son or daughter more than in me is not worthy of me. And he who does not take up his cross and follow me, cleave steadfastly to me, conforming wholly to my example and living, if need be in dying also, is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his lower life will lose it, the higher life. And whoever loses his lower life on my account will find it, the higher life. Now we're going to see that repeated again and again. And all of this was Christ talking to his disciples about their lower life, which is translated in Greek as suke, or your soul life. So Christ is saying, if you don't lose your soul life, you won't find your spiritual life. And he's saying one of the main reasons is because of natural affection. Natural affection. Now there's nothing wrong with natural affection except one thing. It blocks you from releasing your spirit. Mm -hmm. The soul is on the cross. But it still has a lot of what? Natural affection. Mm -hmm. it, it may seem harmless, but there's a problem. God can't pass through. Your love is in the way of what? God's love. Mm -hmm. Your love, you always know soulish love, because so it's very clingy. Mm -hmm. It's very like, it's very, it's like glue. It, it sticks to people. So if they go down, you go down. If they're up, you're up. It, 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 there's no independence. No, no, God's love is not sticky. God's love is just love, whether you're up or whether you're down. Mm -hmm. It's compassionate, but it just never loses itself in the other person. Mm -hmm. It's constantly loving. It always forgives. It's never rude. It, it keeps no record of wrongs. God's love is constant mm -hmm. and strong. It's not like our love that is up and down. One day I love you, one day I don't. Mm -hmm. And it's not clingy. It's, it doesn't attach. Mm -hmm. So Christ was saying, look it, you know, in your own life, God might ask you, like Abraham, give up your son. And, and, and if you pick up your cross and follow him, God will give you the power to what? End that part of the soul. Because the soul is on the cross. He goes, I can't use my body, but I still love this, and I still love this, and I still love that, I still have a... And God goes, if you let me have that, if you stay in the cross, I will cut that out of you. But I won't leave you there. I will replace it with what? My love. So all of a sudden, you might separate from your parents for a while, but then he brings you back. Mm -hmm. And when he brings you back, and you've been circumcised and transformed, now God's love flows through you. Mm -hmm. God is always breaking down to build up. Mm -hmm. This is what the Holy Spirit is always doing. He's always trying to bring light so you see the thing you should like, let go of. 
And he's only trying to bring situations to show you how you react. Mm -hmm. And typically, we don't react well. You know, we, we love our parents, or we love our sister and brother, but then when they do something to us, we, t we lash out at them because we're so attached to them. Mm -hmm. And God goes, that's because of soulish love. Yeah. That ain't because of spiritual love. Spiritual love, it's different. Yeah, spiritual love is, you hurt me, I still love you. Yeah. Soulish love is, if, you're, if you hurt me, an eye for an eye. Yeah. You hurt me, I'm hurting you back because I'm so stuck to you. Yeah. I can't get off you. Yeah. God is always trying to unstick us from everything. See, the soul has to get off the body, but then he has to get off what? Himself. The soul is always looking to be in the body, so I can drive around in the world, be my own person. Or the soul is always looking to what? Be in myself. Well, I know I'm the cross, but you know, God, this is what I want to do, and this is what I think, and this is what I remember, and this is the scripture I read, and this is how I would pray. He just never stops. The soul was made eternal. It has a life in it that would go on forever. <laughs> the, the soul is on the cross but he's like an endless river he has water upon it's all putrid but he has water upon water when he's on the cross this is bearing the cross means this I need the power of the Holy Spirit to keep him on the cross I need the power of the Holy Spirit to keep what? weakening him drawing out his strength when Jesus was on the cross his blood kept what? He kept, he, his blood was, was dripping he kept getting what? weaker. Mm -hmm. The nails driven into him and the crown of thorns and you know, and the gash on his side was draining his blood. So Christ was pinned to the cross and he was what? Losing strength. Mm -hmm. The problem is we may pin the sucker to the cross our whole life but he's, we, we're still not what? Let him get weaker. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we're still feeding him. We're still feeding him. Yeah. We're still listening yeah. to him. Yeah. I just won't sit through the body Poor but I'll do everything else. Poor yeah, yeah. He can still he can still be very strong on the cross. We don't realize his ability to endure. He has a fund of he's like he has a million dollars and he can just keep telling he could our body gets tired, but when we go to sleep, you think the mind stops talking? No, he talks even more. You wake up and you're like, oh God, what is the fool saying on the cross? Why is he talking to me? If you listen to him. He'll slowly come off the cross. You are giving him strength by focusing on him. Yeah. No, no. You've got to learn to focus on Jesus and ignore him. Mm -hmm. Ignore the decomposing guy. Ignore the dead guy. Mm -hmm. Paul, in Romans 7, Paul was like, I'm shackled to this body of death. He goes, who will save me from the body of death? Well, Christ will, because he'll separate the body and the soul. Well, then your next question will be this. Who will save me from myself now? Mm -hmm. You save me from this body. It's inactive. But who will save me from my own soul? My own thoughts are what? Killing me. My own feelings are killed. My own desires are what? Killing me. Until you get to this place, you don't really understand the cross. You have to get sick of yourself. You have to see that, that if you allow your natural affections to happen, oh yes, one day you'll, you'll be nice to them. The next day you'll take out what? The hatchet. Hmm. The same person you love, you want to kill. The, the most... The most um, right. Violent crimes happen in families. Yes, yes. Do you realize that? Like Not outside of families. Yeah. In families. Yeah. I heard yes. from um, um, was through a, a friend of a cop. Like a, he says that ninety percent of the nine one one calls that come in are domestic calls. You, you know why? Yeah. Soulish affection. Yeah. They are attached to each other. It's like, imagine I tie a rope to me and, and Jasmine, and Jasmine decides to go off the deep end. Guess what? I'll go with her. No, no, no. God cuts that rope. He says, no more soulish affection. He goes, godly love. Yeah. Amen? This love will keep loving Jasmine, whether she's down, whether she's up, whether she's in jail, whether she becomes a, a crack addict. It doesn't matter, because love what? Builds. It's constant. It's constant. It don't, it, it don't fluctuate. Yeah, you now, now don't get me wrong, you can go into the soul temporarily to weep with someone, but then you go back out, back into the spirit. You never stay there. Hallelujah. You're not attached to your soulish emotions. You can use them, but you don't want. You don't live there. You live from the cross. Yeah, but, but this sucker has to stay dead. He has to stay dead. So affection, affection stops you from releasing what? Christ. You know, you know. 
you know, I have my old boyfriend and old girlfriend, I have my friends. I, to this day, my mind still thinks about high school every now and then. Like, what well, you say, I haven't called them. We haven't talked to them in 20 years. But it, it, it's, it's, it's your natural what? Relate. Because when the soul got separated from the spirit, in the, in the sense that your spirit died, the soul learned to have its own connections. Yeah. It was primarily connected to the spirit and was supposed to live from the spirit, but it started to live what? By itself. Mm -hmm. And it got all entangled so that even when God comes and regenerates the spirit and separates the body and puts it on the cross, he still has a lot of things what? Holding him. Mm -hmm. Hold, he can't cross over because he goes, but then I would lose this and lose that. And God says, no, no, no. If, whatever mother, brother, sister, friends you lose, I'll give you 100 times what? More. We have to trust him to give us something what? Yeah. Better. And you have to see that soulless affection is like what's one side of a coin. Mm -hmm. Oh, we like this side. What happens? <laughs> and they always turn. That's yeah. why you have domestic violence. Mm -hmm. It's deadly. And we're blind. We have no light. We only see one side. Oh, this is the good side. Oh, everything's so great. Oh, yeah? They ignored me today. Mm -hmm. or, or they broke up with me today. Or they, they're divorcing me today. Oh, look out. Mm -hmm. Look out. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So that, that's one aspect of the soul, right? Go to Mark 8, 32. Okay. And look at another aspect of the soul. So the soul can't live in the body, but the soul can live in itself now. Oh, he can grow nice and strong on the cross if you keep listening to him. Yeah, from 32 to... 32 to 35. Here again, Christ is going to talk about carrying your cross. Now, carrying your cross means letting the Holy Spirit put to death all that soul affection so he can give forth the, un, the, uh, the um, loving kindness of God. Amen? In Mark 8, 32-35, he reads, And he said to him this freely, frankly, plainly, and explicitly, making it unmistakable. And Peter took him by the hand and led him aside, and then facing him began to rebuke him. So Christ is saying, look it, i got to die. And Peter says, but turning around his back to Peter and seeing his disciples, he rebuked Peter. So Peter was saying, took Christ aside and said, you can't die on the cross. Right? And Christ is saying, he rebuked Peter saying, get behind me, Satan. For you do not have a mind intent on promoting what God wills, but what pleases men. You are not on God's side, but that of men. Now, was Peter doing anything bad with his body? No, he was following Christ all around. But his soul was still unwanted. Changed. If you want power all the time, you have to keep carrying your cross, which means keep remembering that this guy has to change on the cross. Putting him in position is not enough. You have to change the way he sees himself yes. and life and God. Yes. You have to renew the entirety of his mind, the way he thinks, the way he feels. Everything has to change. He's just held in driving school, but he still must learn to drive, not as a drunk driver. And Jesus called to him the throng with his disciples and said to them, now look it, so Jesus rebukes Peter and then he's going to teach everyone because Peter is living from his soul, not his spirit. If anyone intends to come after me, let him deny himself. In other words, what you want, learn not to want it. What you feel, learn not to feel it. Learn what you think, learn not to think it. Anything you like too much, move away from it. Amen. This is the cross that you have to carry if you want power and love, and weight, and healing, and wisdom, and everything of God is yours, except the soul has to still get what? Out of the way. Yeah. On the cross, he's still in the way. Yes. It's a process of him dying. Mm -hmm. No one dies on, on a cross, what? Right away. God does not let him die right away. It would be too much of a shock for you. Mm. He lets him die in stages, as you realize, as light shines. Yes? Is that why, like, when you're on death row, like, you're still sentenced for, like, Maybe like 10 years. Yes. Then you, they have to get used to it. Then yes. you have your last meal. Yes. Then you, like, it's a process. Yes. So is that part of God's mercy? It is. We like, we see, we all want the death to be immediate and complete. But and we God's really like, don't. <laughs> yeah, perfect. But we really don't. Because if we did, we would go crazy. Yeah. We must be prepared to bear our cross mm -hmm. until Christ comes back or until we die. Mm -hmm. In other words, be prepared to keep having the Holy Spirit weaken that sucker. You, you, every day you must carry, which means you must remember that the Holy Spirit is actively working. If the Holy Spirit is not actively working, holding him and draining him, 
you will not cross over. Your spirit will not get stronger. Because even though he's in a position, he's still talking. He's still directing the jail. Yeah. The mafia guy is in the jail, but he controls what? Everything still. Paul was in jail, but he said the gospel's not stopped. He was still writing letters. And he was doing everything in a Roman jail, and the gospel was what spreading. He was still very active. Yeah. Well, in the same way, though, though he's on the cross and the body is away from him, he's got a life of his own, baby. <laughs> this is why, without understanding this stuff, you don't know why the power is constant. Because you're still confusing your spirit and your soul. You still don't have light to separate them. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. It goes, let him deny himself, forget, ignore, disown, lose sight of himself and his own interests. Mm -hmm. Now that's pretty strong. So God's like saying, I need you to just bury it, forget it, ignore it, disown it, lose sight of it. Focus on me. And keep focusing on me. Because the minute you forget to focus on me, he'll start to live. Mm -hmm on the cross and try to get off the cross. Yeah. <laughs> the minute you forget me, he'll come off the cross. And the minute you forget me, he'll st still keep talking on the cross. Mm -hmm. And joining me as a disciple and siding with my party, follow with me, continue me, cleaving steadfastly to me. For whoever wants to save this higher spiritual eternal life will lose it, the lower natural temporal life, which is lived only on earth. And whoever gives up his life, which is lived only on earth, for my sake, for my gospel's sake, will save it, his higher spiritual life in the kingdom of God. Amen. Okay? So, it, so what was Peter showing here? Peter was showing the, the aspect of the soul that wants to survive. Mm -hmm. Peter was literally saying this to Christ. You mean you're going to do what God wants and not save yourself? In other words, saving yourself is more important than doing what God wants. In other words, the soul is like this. I'll do anything. Just don't kill me. Mm -hmm. Just let me live. You know, and we make bargains with God. Typically, what's holding us back is, is okay, you don't want to sin anymore, you don't want to be in the world, you're on the cross. But God's like, I need you to let go of somebody. I need you to let go of your I need you to give up something. But we don't want to. And so we, we it goes around in circles. God's like, I don't change my mind. And we hold out until one day we finally give up that one thing whether it's a relationship, whether it's a feeling, whether it's a thought, whether it's a memory, some addiction, and then all of a sudden, all the power what, breaks through. And we're like, what took us so long? Mm -hmm. It's our own stubbornness and our own blindness. Mm -hmm. Peter was stuck on himself. Peter was stuck on himself. And because he's stuck on himself, saving himself, of course, he sees everyone else this way. Mm -hmm. So Christ dying is like, are you crazy? Mm -hmm. No, no, no. Ask God for something else. That's too high for Christ to pay. And Christ is like, no, no, no. Carry a cross. Follow me and carry a cross, which means that do everything even to the point of letting all the things that you love so much go. Mm -hmm. This is the price if you want God's power. What? All the time. All the time. One last example before we go a little deeper. Go to Luke 17. Luke 17 from 26. Uh, thir uh, 35 or 34. Right. Yeah. So we looked at soul affection. We looked at soul preservation. Now let's look at another aspect of the soul. Okay. From 26 it reads, And just as it was in the days of Noah, so will it be in the time of the Son of Man. Now this is Christ coming back on the second coming. He goes, People ate, they drank, they married, they were given in marriage, right up to the day when Noah went into the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. So also it was in, as it was in the days of Lot. People ate, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. Now are these bad things? No. But if you love these things more than you love God, you can't what? Go to Him. He's calling you. Right? So on the cross, he goes, okay, I can't use my body anymore, but I still, I still think about it. It's like they were in the desert, you know, the Israelites, and they're still what? Thinking about Egypt. They ate, they drank, they bought. They, so, so your memory, your, he goes, okay, I can't live through the body, but I can live through my what? My memory, my imagination. Mm -hmm. and, and the soul is eternal. He has a lot of strength to do it. If you don't hold him in position, the cross does two things. The cross immobilizes him, contains him. 
and then it stops all its manifestation by weakening him. But you have to keep remembering your cross. Don't let him come. Don't, don't listen to him and keep focusing on what? On Christ. Then your transformation will expedite. We, some of us believe that we, some of, a lot of us don't accept the death. But if you do accept the death, you must accept that Christ is also what? Killing him. It's, you just didn't pin him. It's a process. Because where there's a death, there's always what? A resurrection. If you keep dying, yes. you will keep living. Yes. So the, the pinning should be for all time. But the process of draining him so you can have new life is what? Ongoing. You must, and the minute you forget that, don't worry, he'll remind you. Because he'll start talking. You know, sometimes we're walking along and everything's fine, and then all of a sudden we get all these thoughts and all these feelings. are like, what happened? Mm -hmm. You forgot to carry your cross. Mm -hmm. You stopped following Jesus. And he's talking from the cross, and if you listen to him, he's going to come off the cross, and all hell is going to break loose. Because you do not understand the final step. You might have gotten to here, and you may get a breakthrough every now and then. But it's, you haven't become steadfast yet. This is why he warned all his disciples at the end. Right? So we can't love eating and drinking, blah, 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 more than the Lord. Um, he goes, 29. But on the very day that lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. That is the way it will be on the day that the Son of Man is revealed. On that day, let him who is on the housetop with his belongings in the house not come down and go inside to carry them away. And likewise, let him who is in the field not turn back. Remember Lot's wife. Mm -hmm. Lot's wife turned back. Mm -hmm. The problem with him on the soul is he's not looking to the spirits. He's not looking past the cross. He keeps looking what, what he lost. I lost my body, and I, but I still want my friends, and I still want my attachments, and I still want to live, and I still... He's still looking back. Yeah. But there's a problem. God never wants him to look back. He wants them to look what? Forward. Mm -hmm. Look to your new life now. Mm -hmm. Every time you look back, Christ will say, you're not worthy of me. Mm -hmm. You're not carrying your cross. Mm -hmm. The cross prevents you from looking what? Back. Mm -hmm. The cross is like a dividing line. The cross has to separate soul and body. But then it has to separate what? Soul and spirit. Because your soul is covering your spirit. The body was covering the soul. So the body and the soul have to be what? Separated. But now the soul is covering the spirit. Will not let it manifest because he's too busy talking on the cross. So God has to now what? Separate the soul and the spirit. Break the soul away from itself so the spirit can come through. He goes, whoever tries to preserve his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life will preserve it and quicken it. I tell you, in that night there will be two men in one bed. One will be taken and the other will be left. Why is one taken and the other left? Because one had a lot of attachments. And one was ready to what? Go. go. You must be always ready to go. You must be always ready to leave this earth. You must be always ready to do whatever God wants. Jen, go to China. You know, Gloria, uh, uh, pick up your cross and uh, wash Jasmine's feet. Jasmine, I want you to uh, go over here and minister. You must be always be ready to drop what you're doing and what? Go. But if you go, no, 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 I, I have things, I, I, I need to get married, and, and, I, and I need to plant something, and I need to buy something, and I need to eat first. I mean, Christ is like, I don't think you understand what I'm asking you to do. I'm asking you to lose all your soul life. And then, now, last thing I want to show you about the soul. Go to John 12, 24, 26. This is the real essence of the soul. We've been talking about the soul, love of survival and preservation with Peter, right? We've been talking about soul attachment. We've been talking about soul affection. But here's the real essence of the soul. This is why God has to get the soul out of the way. And how we, have, by light, have to see this. John 12, 24 to 26. Are you there? It reads, I assure you most solemnly, I tell you, Unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just one grain. It never becomes more, but lives by itself alone. But if it dies, it produces many others and yields a rich harvest. Mm -hmm. So unless the seed shell in the ground dies, the seed in it doesn't come up and bear what? Much fruit. Yes. Well, guess what that seed shell is? 
It's our soul life. Our soul life traps the spirit. And it blocks all what? The harvest. It bro blocks all the fruitfulness. We want lots of fruit. We want lots of harvest. We want prosperity in our spirit and our soul and our body and our life and our finance and our ministry and our relationships. But there's a problem. The soul is what? Holding it back. It's like a husk on a corn. There's something covering. Just like, just like my clothes are covering my skin, so too the soul is like a skin covering what? The spirit. God has to consistently try to break through. But you have to be willing to let it go. God breaks through in two ways. From the outside, he brings difficulty to show you that you can't handle it. Yeah. And on the inside, he brings truth or revelation to again show you that you can't what? Yeah. Handle it. Then you will let it go. You'll give up the, 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 the natural emotions for the holy emotions. You'll stop attaching to everything that starts to attach to God. You won't try to save yourself. You try to lose yourself to find your real self. This is the essence of bearing your cross. Bearing your cross means that I am willing to go through the process where God keeps me on the cross and takes away all my independent and self-centered and prideful thinking, feeling, willing, and personality. Mm -hmm. You'll still think, you'll still feel, you'll still will, but another force, another life, the yeah. life of Christ will be pushing through. Yeah. Your fact. On the cross, he's still talking to your mind and trying to get you to feel and trying to get in the body and trying to get you to decide what he wants. Yeah. But now something else, if you consistently allow him to die, will push through your faculties. Other thoughts will dominate your mind. Other feelings will push up through your heart. A new energy will animate your body. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. This is the resurrection power. Amen. Everything of God is resurrection power. Everything has to die and come back. Or God does not, you cannot present it to God. Mm -hmm. You cannot, if, if I try to bring the dead to God, God will go. Most of the church is this. You know what Romans 7 is? Romans 7 is Paul going like this. It's the activity of the dead. Ever see those zombie movies, the activity of the dead? Mm -hmm. This guy is dead, but he's also always trying to live as a zombie on the cross or off the cross. He's always walking around like dead men. Now, there's a difference between the activity of the dead and the resurrection of the dead. Mm -hmm. The activity of the dead is they're not dead yet. The resurrection of the dead is they're done mm -hmm. and new life comes. Yeah. That's the only thing that you can present to God and that you will accept. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. So, the, the, go to 2 Corinthians 4, 10 to 18. We're almost done in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 4, 10 to 13. 10, yeah, 10, 10, 10, to, 10 to 18, but we're, we're, I'm not going to read it all. Thank you. Okay. Now, look at what Paul says here. We understand the side of the cross that pins us, and we'd like that to be the end. But no, 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 no. It's an ongoing process. And this is what you have to understand. This is what bearing the cross means. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's just, just like Jesus, he had to bear his cross to get, yes. to get crucified. Yes. Right? So it's the same. The bearing way. the cross is the process of it. Yes. The, the, you were crucified is the positioning. Mm -hmm. But the process is in that position, the, the Holy Spirit is draining the strength. It's dredging up. It's pulling all the water out of him. Mm -hmm. It's taking away the soul life to give you new life. Amen? Because the soul is still full of life. Still full of life. The mafia man in jail is still running a great enterprise. Amen? Amen. See, when something, when, something, when something dies, it starts to leak. Ever notice that? Mm -hmm. you know, ever have a fruit for a long time that starts to leak in the yeah. fridge? Yeah. Well, him dying on the cross, he's leaking. Mm -hmm. And if you let that leak come out, through your words, or through your thoughts, or through your feelings, or through your body, it will pollute everything and stop the work of God. So the cross doesn't put him in a position. It mops him up. It takes away all the craziness so he can't talk or think or feel anymore. That's why the Bible says, be still in the presence of the Lord. Even though he's on the cross, he goes, okay, you can stop me from using the body, but you can't stop me from my voice. I can still talk. I can still think. See, for years I've had to deal with that voice inside of my head. 
Because for years, I'm st still learning to give up all that he is, all his affection, all his attachments, all his desires, all his independence, all his pride, all his self-centeredness. It's a process. And I, was, I have to keep carrying what? My cross. Carrying my cross is the process of agreeing with God that this thing on the cross needs to be what? Continuously put to death yeah. so I can continuously have life. life. We want new life. Why can't we get new life? Because we have to have fresh death. Hallelujah. New life only comes from new death. Yes. If, if, there's, an, if, if there's just the old death, that's died. Then you get the old life, but it's stale by then. No, if you want new life all the time, you have to have fresh death, which means new parts of you have to keep what? Dying. So new parts, so new wine can keep getting what? Poured. Amen. Hallelujah. So the Holy Spirit is always pulling the old wine, the old inferior wine out. So that the so the wine bottle is what? Empty. The soul is what? Empty. Not empty as in dead. Empty as is nothing is driving its faculties anymore. Mm -hmm. and, and then it's animating with a new life, a fresh life, mm -hmm. a new energy. Mm -hmm. Amen. The Bible calls it the Christian energy. Mm -hmm. Now look in this last part. This is the essence of of what, I, what I'm talking about, bearing the cross. This is Paul. Now, Paul was exposed to a lot of abuse. Now, now, now notice how he reacted to it. Paul was you know, exposed to famine and hunger and, and, and people trying to kill him and, 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 and poverty and sickness and all these difficult things happened to Paul. And now, notice how he reacts. He goes, always caring about in the body the liability and exposure to the same putting to death that the Lord Jesus suffered. So that the resurrection life of Jesus may also be shown forth and by in our bodies. Now keep reading. For we who live are constantly, what's that word? Constantly. constantly experiencing being handed over to death for Jesus' sake. That the resurrection life of Jesus also may be evidence through our flesh, flesh which is liable to death. So Paul is saying, we who live are always offering ourselves up to death. Why? So that Jesus can live. I'm always exposing myself to the Holy Spirit to take away more of what? My old thoughts, my old feelings. I'm keeping them on the cross away from the body. And I'm constantly going to the Holy Spirit. Did you hear that? Did you see that? I call forth the power mm -hmm. of the cross. I call forth the power to carry that cross. Which is, remember that the Holy Spirit... The Holy Spirit actualizes the power of the cross right now, right here. It's an ongoing process. Yes. As he keeps doing that, I keep growing and changing. I keep changing my proportion. I become less and less soulish, and I become more and more spiritual. Yes. The cross is teaching me, yes. and I am learning. Yes. The cross teaches you. Every time you hear that voice, you're, you, he's talking, you're letting him off, he's getting stronger. You need to constantly what? Expose him to death. Expose him to the work of the cross. Mm -hmm. The effect of the cross is death. The, the cross does two things. It puts you in place and then it what? It finishes you. Yes. Then you can't talk. A dead person cannot talk. Mm -hmm. and, you, and, and notice what Christ says. He goes, if you follow me, you've got to pick up your cross. Which means as long as you live, you must be prepared to have the cross work. Mm -hmm. So that the new life can keep on flowing. As long as you live, never ever forget this. Because the minute you forget it, he'll start to talk, he'll go, let me in. He starts to get stronger. Yeah. Yes. For just remind him, like, I was just picturing somebody on a hospital bed. And, um, you know when you put them on life support? Yes. That's like, you know, we try to put our ourselves yes. on life support while on the cross. Exactly. And like, but in truth, we're supposed to... Uh, Right? Is that yes. Work? Like you're supposed to die, like the breath out. You're like, supposed to get weaker on the cross, not stronger. Yes. Like yes. How, how Jesus was. He he suffocated. Yes. Right. He he gave up he, his last breath. He got weaker, and yeah. you're you know you have a phone, right? If you don't plug it in, what happens? It gets weaker. Your soul is supposed to be getting weaker and weaker. But we don't know how to carry the cross. We don't know that death, death is actively working us. Look, look at the next one. 12. 12 summarizes it all. Thus death is what? Actively at work. The Holy Spirit is actively trying to put him to keep him on the cross and finish him off. But it is in order that our life may be actively at work in you. That life will then flow out to you. Look at God wants your spirit regenerated. The Holy Spirit and your spirit. 
He wants your soul, your soul on the cross and being drained of power. So he's not in the way. So he learns to submit. He learns to put the spirit first. He learns to turn and not remember Lot's wife. And he wants your body inactive to sin. Then the water, the living water, will flow from the Holy Spirit to the your spirit. Through the soul, through death row. There, there's only life through death. Yes. And then the body becomes animated now. But not with the old energy, with the new superpower. Yes. Then everyone in the world, then chains are broken, then tombs burst open, then sickness falls away, and then the dead raise, and the blind see, and the broken hearts are binded. All those things happen. But there's a, there, there, there has to be an alignment of everything. Mm -hmm. The soul cannot be in the way, or else he'll block it or mix it. Mm. He'll add his two cents worth. The Holy Spirit is, is, is ministering, but then the soul is, I have this idea. He's still talking from the cross. And every time you see that, if you have anything, you turn away and say, Lord, did you see that manifestation? I call forth your death to actively work in me, that your life may be more active than ever, that I might decrease, that you might increase. I thank you for the power of the cross and the grace to remember and carry my cross. Amen. This is the... In other words, God always wants you to consciously choose him. He never wants you to be sleepy. This is why you must never get too tired, because you're not, you're not going to be paying what? Mm -hmm. Attention to what needs to be put to death and what needs to live. Yeah. You're not choosing you're not choosing. God keeps him around, I believe, partly because there's too much of a change if he dies all at once, but also to keep us, what, alert. Uh, amen. We like to be sleepy and dopey. And like, Who said that? I don't know. I'll just listen to it. We just kind of listen to anybody. We listen to our spirit. We listen to the one on the cross. We listen to the world. We, we never move forward. We don't see what God is trying to do. We don't see what the Holy Spirit is actively trying to do. Mm. God is actively destroying to actively build up. He's actively putting away something to release something. Amen. Amen? And if we understand that with a fresh death comes fresh, fresh life, Hallelujah. we will always carry our cross. Yeah. Yes. It's just like a fresh seed has to break if you want fresh harvest. Correct. Amen. Perfect. It's the same. But that means yes. that our, we always have to have seeds being yes. buried and yes. um, broken. Every time you're not experienced, you know, you know why in the Psalms David goes like this, he goes, man, I'm so thirsty. Why was he thirsty? There was a part of his soul blocked in his spirit. The, the whole Psalms is a transition of his soul into a spiritual soul. In, in the Psalms, he's like, I'm lonely, I'm this, I'm that, I don't trust you, I'm fearful. Of it. He's all in his soul, he's all soulish. That's me. Yeah, he's all soulish, but he can't get out. So he's crying out to God, he's crying out to God. And God in his mercy goes, I'll break through. Yes. But you have to let go of something before I can come through. Amen. Often the times we are the one holding God back because we're holding on to something. Yes. We're holding on to unforgiveness. We're holding on to what we think yes. is right. We're holding on to our body. We're holding yes. on to our relationships. We're holding on to something that Not stops the life support. Yes. All Satan does is set up someone to block your spirit. Satan must have known that at some point your spirit's going to come back alive. But guess what? He can't come out. You have the life in you. You have this life in you. And it's full of power. It's bursting with life. But guess what? This guy stops it. And even when he's on the cross, he can still stop it. Because he's still ruling everything from that position. You see? So you must constantly, actively call forth the Holy Spirit to what? Put him to death. Put him to death. Put him to death. So this new life can release and release and release. And every time you put down your cross, well, I guarantee you, he'll start talking. Yeah. He'll start start talking because the power is no longer active in you. Mm -hmm. And if you let him keep talking, he will come off the cross, take over your body, sin again, and you're like, why am I here again? Yeah. What happened? Yeah. Now, it's okay if it happens, but do you at least do you see? I'm trying to draw a picture so you understand your own experience and you know how to move forward. So a lot of us have accepted the blood for forgiveness of sins. Wonderful. A lot of us have accepted the cross to get rid of ourselves. Wonderful. A lot of us have accepted the new life. And a lot of us have accepted, I can't go back to my old strength to fulfill the new life. Wonderful. Now here's the last one. Do you accept the ongoing process of bearing the cross? Which means I'm carrying around the power to actively shut him down on the cross so that new life can keep flowing. Because if you accept that, I guarantee you, you will be, receive power. Mm -hmm. Ongoing. 
how has Sifu gotten, and I've watched Sifu, no one is closer to Sifu than myself, I've watched him get stronger and stronger, and lately he's been getting so strong. It's like, I can't believe how strong he's getting. He's like, it's like, what took him so long? This guy. This guy, and he's had, it, he's had him on the cross for a long time, but he still listens to him every now and then. His opinions, but gradually, 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 everything that that soul is attached to, all the relationships and all the opinions and all the memory and all the imagination and all the survival and all the selfishness and all, all the independence, it's been going what? Away. Because his, his mind used to go, oh, we're working the hardest we can. And God's like, you're only at 10%. Who was saying that? The guy on the cross. So God, God had to what? Teach him on the cross. Okay, listen, dead person. You are not allowed to have any old opinion. I need to give you fresh living water and fresh manna to teach you. And the more Sifu has been eating of the food, amen, the more the crucified life is, is truly crucified. And the more the fresh life is flowing through. Hallelujah. Flowing through. Amen? There's a story of, of Moses. Moses and Israelites, the Israelites were arguing with Moses about who had authority. And, and Moses said, okay, we're going to settle it this way. All the 12 tribes give me a staff. And all the 12 tribes gave him a staff, including Aaron, who's from the, uh, the Levites. And they all took their staffs. Now, staffs are pieces of wood that have been cut off and they're dead. There's no leaves, no branches. And they all put their staffs in the sanctuary. Right? Now, now, and then God said, whatever staff buds and blossoms and gives fresh almonds is the one that I have given authority to. Because they were going like, no, 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 I should be the boss. And they go, no, 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 I should be the boss. And God's like, I'm going to sell it. Hallelujah. Whoever I've chosen to be the boss will have the staff that buds and blossoms fresh almonds. Now that's a miracle. That's impossible. Mm -hmm. So the next morning, it was a full night, then the next day, they took all the staffs. And lo and behold, Aaron's staff budded and bore fresh almonds. Hallelujah. That staff came back alive. It, it, it's, it's like, imagine, imagine, you know, I, I have a, I have like, a, I don't know, I take a staff off an apple tree, and then the next morning there's an apple growing out of the staff. That's, that's, that's crazy. It's like, imagine your broom, mm -hmm. like, bears something. You're like, this is wild. Right? What was God showing? God was showing that who I choose has passed from death to life. Mm. Who I choose has passed from death to life. Resurrection life is the only basis on which to live. He goes, so God will always test you. Why do you live? This is when you present yourself as someone from the dead, risen from the dead. Not, not actively dead. Not the activity of the dead. See? When, when, he's, when, he, when he comes off the cross or when he's talking from the cross, it's called a pretend Christian. You're still using your natural power. You're pretending to be loving. But wait till they turn on you. You're pretending to be patient and wash people's feet. But when they don't want to wash yours... You know, and God says, no, 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 that's a fake. I want the real. The real has to pass through death into resurrection. If, if, if that soul on that cross starts to renew its mind, learns to be subservient and submissive to the spirit, life will flow through it. And it will resurrect. Something else will be driving the faculties. You know, your mind will be filled with peace and love and your feelings will admit that and your body will be filled with new life. God takes away your body to separate it from the soul. But the Bible says... If Jesus was resurrected from the dead, so too I will resurrect your body. Mm -hmm. God will resurrect your body, but not from your, your natural strength. Mm -hmm. from, the, from, the, from the supernatural life. Amen. The, the, the soul will not dare to give the body any energy. The soul will step aside for the fresh living water to pass through the soul into the body. Then the body comes back to life. Until then, the body is dead and the soul is transforming. Mm. Until fresh water can pass what? Through. Mm. Amen. Amen? This is what we call the desert. The desert is I can't use my body, but I'm not okay. quite, I'm, I'm not in the new life, but I'm not in the old life. So I'm in between. I'm in between. Amen? That's a tough place to be. When you're stuck in between, the soul wants to commit suicide, or the soul wants to go back, or the soul wants to, you know, um, give up. And God's like, no, no, no. The soul must learn to live another way. It can't live its old way through the body. And it can't live in itself anymore because God is trying to actively put it to death. It must live what? A new way. You have to choose this though. You have to consciously choose it. That's, that's why Christ said, if you, he said if. He goes, if you want to follow me, then this is what you have to do. Because I'm leading you deeper into life and deeper into power. 
but I have to lead, lead you deeper into death. This is the gospel. This is the gospel of salvation. Mm -hmm. Saving your soul from itself. <laughs> save me from the world. Save me from this body of sin. Save me from my soul. Mm -hmm. So I can live in the spirit. Amen. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do we want to show you anything else? Yes. So, we're going to end here. Go to, go to number 1779. Close here today in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Number 1779. And we close here today in Jesus' name. And Moses deposited the rods before the Lord in the tent of the testimony. This is what I'm telling you about. And the next day Moses went into the tent of the testimony, and behold, the rod of Aaron for the house of Levi had sprouted and brought forth buds and produced blossoms and yielded ripe alms. For life and service to God, he only accepts resurrection life from the dead. Now, this is the thing I want to warn you about. It had, that, those rods, that rod of Aaron's, had to spend a full night in the <laughs> sanctuary. Amen. There had to be a full night of darkness. Amen. Which means that there will come a time when God is trying to take you deep. And it will take away everything from you. You feel like you can't do anything. If you've ever been through this, you know what it's like. It's like, I can't do anything, Lord. I can't minister, I can't pray, I don't even feel like eating, I just feel like useless, everything's dying, everything's going, I don't, what's happening to me? God is subtracting, he's subtracting, hang on, though there's weeping in the evening, there's dancing in the morning, though you sow in tears, you reap in joy, we all have to go through a period sometimes where he's, he, he's we all, we would all like it, you know, death, resurrection, we all, we all want it quick. But no, it's, sometimes there's season periods where he's like, there's no, there's no life. It's, he's just taken away. He's just taken. And you feel, you literally feel like you're dying. You literally feel like you're getting the life sucked out of you. And you're like, is there no end to this? And God's like, hang on. After a full night in the sanctuary will come the breaking of the day. And you will bud and blossom and be fruitful. Amen. Amen? If we do not know how to carry our cross, mm -hmm. and if we do not know how to pass through the night, mm -hmm. we can never get to the other side. Oh. Amen? Mm -hmm. So I leave you with that. We have accepted the blood for forgiveness of sins. We've accepted the cross to put Adam on it. We're in the new life. Don't go back. Amen. And this new life, don't remember, the death, him on the cross is ongoing. It's active. Fresh death for fresh life. Amen? And if you will submit and endure by faith, God will empower you. You'll bear, you'll pluck, but you'll be fruitful. Amen? In Jesus' name, we love you. I leave you with this. If we pick up the body, we will live like animals. If we pick up the soul, we can be cultured, gifted, educated, but we'll still be rebellious and independent from God. Yeah. Or we can stay on the cross by the power of the Holy Spirit and get the entirety of our mind renewed so that we can be spiritual servants of God. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. First of all, Lord, Lord, King of Kings, thank you for your word today. Your yes, word is truth. Your word sets free. Yes, your word is Jesus. Yes. And let us be continuously familiar, gaining insight and understanding into him who is the truth. His spirit was released, and his spirit now indwells us. And that is the spirit of the crucified one, the resurrected one, and the ascended one. And that spirit is our resident boss. And that spirit is actively putting to death the soul life with the body, and actively putting the soul life with itself. 
that your resurrection life might flow through and cause everything to bud, blossom, and bear fruit. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for that blood. By that blood, we are forgiven and released of all sins and guilt. And by your cross, the sinner, the old man, the flesh is crucified. And by your resurrection life, you gave us new life. Life that wants to obey God. And life that is trying to get familiar with the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Let us not go back to the old power. No. And let us stay on the cross, the old man on the cross. And let us keep him there. And let us be active, alert, watchful, praying to make sure the Holy Spirit continues to put him to death. That the life of Jesus might actively flow out to others. To glorify you, to benefit the people. That we might live our highest life. Christ warned his disciples. He said, if you want to follow me, you must choose the cross. You must deny yourself. Pick up your cross and follow me. Lord, break us away from everything that hinders you. Send your light. Bring forth your light. Let your light lead us to your holy dwelling place, Father. Apart from light, we're in darkness. We cannot see the blood. We cannot see ourselves. We cannot see the sinfulness of the soul. We cannot see the wickedness of our bodies. We cannot see the work of the cross. We cannot see your resurrection life. We cannot see your glory, Father. Help us. Don't leave us blind, Father. You said if anybody wants to know your will, you will reveal your will. Yes. And your will for us to live in the Spirit and yes. walk in the Spirit and to overcome in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Yes. So, Father, grant us the anointing. Prepare us for burial like you did oh, with Jesus. Pour that anointing on us that we will not resist, that we will not submit, that we will lie on the altar and allow you, your Spirit, your living Word to separate soul and spirit, to break the covering, the seed shell off the, the kernel of corn, to break, break the husk off the corn, to yes. release the Spirit, yes. to break the outer man, to yes. divide the outer man from the inner man, that our spirit might be released, that life might flood, Father. Father, we thank you for taking us to the place where we truly live a crucified life. Yes. Where, Father, we will say like Paul, I've been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life now live, now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who died and lived for me. Yes. Oh, Father, we thank you. We thank you for the Son of your life. And help us to stay yes. guard, wide awake and aware, bearing our cross, always putting in effect the ongoing activity of the Holy Spirit, that fresh life might abound everywhere we go. And everywhere we go, or everywhere our shadows touch and fall, everywhere we talk and everywhere we express, let it be the life of Christ. Let it be resurrection life. Let us worship because of resurrection life. Let us read the Bible because of resurrection life. Let us love others because of resurrection life. Let us break bread and do it all for the glory of God because of resurrection life. Let all be resurrection life. Paul. Yes, Lord. Because then I know you will go well done, wise and faithful servants, Father. Oh, we thank you for the truth. Let it continue yes, to set Lord. us free, Father. Yes. Let this word remain as a yes. lasting ordinance that as long as we're on this yes. earth, we shall carry our cross. You be the honor and glory in Jesus' mighty name. Help us to decrease that you might continuously rise, increase, and expand. So you be the honor and glory in Jesus' name. We say, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus.